everyone and welcome to another review from Colour with Claire. Today we've got the latest edition of the Colour in Heaven magazine. This is Sorcerers and Sorceresses and this contains 40 all new and exclusive designs by Nalik Shoemaker. Hopefully I'm saying your name right. Um, if not, just bear with me. <laughs> so this is the edition for August. It came out uh, last Wednesday, I think. So if you're in the UK, you may have seen this already in your local news agents and supermarkets. And uh, yes, it is a gorgeous edition, as you will see. Um, you can see from the cover the kind of art that's going to be inside. And then on the back, there's another illustration from inside as well. So it says that all of these are new and exclusive. So they haven't been featured anywhere else in the past in any other books or artwork or anything like that. They are brand new for Colouring Heaven. So we'll open up and we'll read a little bit about Nalik. So born and raised in the Netherlands, Nalik has always had a passion for art. She started drawing and painting at the age of five and simply never stopped. Everything she makes is fully handmade and she's self-taught, for which she's very proud and shouldn't she be? Absolutely stunning talent here. Uh, Nalik's mantra is, with lots of dedication, love for what you do and time and effort, you can achieve anything. And she hopes she can inspire more people to follow their dreams. And then you've got a few little links there for you to go ahead and find Nalik on her different social media channels. We've got our usual colour combination chart there and then we're straight into the illustrations. So you can tell by the cover, you can see from this first illustration the kind of art that we have on offer. It is very, very detailed, very much um, a hand-drawn sort of sketchy look to everything. Um, you, can, you can just see the, uh, the incredible amount of time and effort that's gone into these illustrations they really are very detailed just look at the background here with all these archways and uh, again on his clothing here you can see the detail and yes it's all people mixture of men and women so a lot of the times you get these books and it's all female portraits isn't it but it's really nice and refreshing to see men also included now sometimes you'll get a little bit of a title or a biography or background here on the illustration but that isn't the case in this one so they're all kind of left to be interpreted as you wish I love this so this lady has all of these dreadlocks and I believe that that Nalik actually has dreads as well so maybe she's sort of fashioning these off of her own style but you can see there is tons of jewelry and ornamental decoration it's all very kind of pagan there's a lot of fur and um, you know you've got the um, I think these are actually horns here as well so maybe there's a little bit of a mixture of animal, beast and human. So this is the, uh, is it the Necromannican or something like that? It's the Book of the Dead or it looks to be. Uh, if you love horror movies like me, you will have seen The Evil Dead. It looks kind of like that book made out of human skin. And uh, I'm guessing that this is a necromancer and he's doing some sort of um, spells or what have you. So this is the one that I've started, as you can see, I've not finished it yet, and I've been doing this with my Derwent Ink Tents. And I think that's because when I look at these illustrations personally, I think they are really well suited to wet media and watercolour. It just kind of looks um, the kind of illustrations that you would just immediately think water media, um, you know, maybe using your um watercolor pencils or paints or you know that's just the feeling that they give me anyway and i really like how this is coming on i really like this particular illustration because it's got a witch on it um and you know anything witchy or what have you it always draws me in so we've got i mean this looks like a man but it could go either way to be fair um this is a dragon wrapped around him and he's holding this sword he's got some tartan so maybe a little scottish or celtic themed this one We've got another dreadlocked lady with her horns here. I don't know whether it's meant to be the same lady, but um, I actually heard that um, Nalik used real people to um, take her portraits from. So people who were colouring her art previously or people who followed her on Instagram or inter interacted with her on her uh, social media channel, she was using their faces for some of these uh, portraits in here. So I'll just go through and show you each and every single page so that you know exactly what you're getting with this issue. We've got a landscape one here of a centaur. And then this lady looks very much like a kind of Sansa Stark warrior type lady. We've got a Medusa 
here. So again, not sure whether this is a woman or a man. It looks like she has quite a substantial bust, but you know, like I said, it could go either way. You could make it into a woman or a man, uh, but Medusa is usually depicted as a woman, isn't she? Um, yes, yeah, so snakes in the hair, big horrid claws here. And then you've got this, what looks to be, well, I'm not sure. It's got wings and it's also got a double kind of tail. Oh, no, hang on a minute. These are mushrooms, sorry. So it's got wings, so I'm guessing it's a fairy or an elf, because look at these ears. It's also got a unicorn horn as well. We've got a pirate guy here, and this is the one that I probably would have coloured if I hadn't started already on the witch one. I really, really love this. I love how the flames in his uh, palm of his hand is coming out as a, a skull in the flames he's got big pendants pentagrams and all that kind of good stuff it looks like he's got animal skulls in his hat as well so this lady another dreadlock lady it looks like she's had her ears stretched so it's really kind of there's a lot of different styles of people going on in this book it's all very kind of fantasy and within that realm but there's a lot of different little details that are making up these illustrations they're not just um, you know carbon copies of each other with a few slight differences so we've got another guy here looks like he's casting a spell then we've got what looks to be maybe a it could even be a wedding couldn't it we've got the guy and his his wife here I'm assuming loving the costumes in this you can have some real fun with your gold metallics and your metal gel pens and things like that I love this staff that she's holding it's got some cluster crystals poking up out of it this lady looks to be the dragon queen she's got her two little dragons sat on her shoulders and there's lots of books flying around uh, magic dragons so again, maybe a spellcaster. Again, the book is all about sorcerers and sorceresses. So there's a lot of magic going on. Did I just, hang on, yes, I missed one. No, I didn't. Paper's just really thick. No, it's not a, mass, a greatly thick paper. It's, it's a really, um, it's a decent stock, but it's not the thickest paper. Um, so this guy is very, very ripped and he's got this huge tattoo. I feel like I should know what that is, but maybe it's just some sort of spell or rune. Um, and he's got horns coming out of his back, unless there's some sort of wing thing. I don't think they are, but loads of candles that seem to be dripping onto his skin. I can't imagine that's very comfortable. And he's got this big sword as well. We've then got the uh, dreadlock lady again, or a different dreadlock lady. Uh, loads of butterflies flying around and she's got wings as well. So yeah, she could be she could be anything, couldn't she really? We've then got a couple of magicians here. It looks like a phoenix is wrapped around this. Uh, well, it could be a phoenix or it could be something else because it seems to have a really long snake-like body. Um, and the cauldron. So again, lots of spells being cast. We have, oh, I love this. This is kind of like a fox, but it could be any sort of uh, animal of that kin. Loads and loads of crystals sticking out. So it almost looks like it's grown organically uh, from the ground, which is a really interesting idea. We then have this guy who's toting a really awesome staff with a skull on it. A couple of lights hanging off it as well. And a little bit of, what would you call this kind of style? Um, like an Inca? sort of style totem things you would see like on a totem pole maybe so we've got a horse here who also has his mane dreadlocked to match his um owner and she also has this really big kind of fur cape on like you'd see in game of thrones if you are a fan of things like that then you probably will love the art in this book so this lady is beautiful she has a crown of crystals and not much going on in the background, so it's maybe a bit of a simpler one, this one. But she is certainly wearing lots of ornamental jewellery and looking quite contemplative. So here looks more like what you would imagine a traditional magician or kind of Gandalf figure to look like. He's got his book, he's got his necklace made of bones, he's got his quill. Um, and this looks to be a phoenix now in the background, I think. Lots of flames coming up as well to frame the whole image another landscape one so just another sorcerer doing his magic then this looks to be wow what could this be it looks like a dragon but it also looks a bit like a seahorse so you maybe even could make this an underwater thing um but yes again some absolutely beautiful staffs here 
This one is quite odd. It's obviously not a uh, obviously not a human creature. Um, again, there's loads and loads of crystals growing from it. The kind of um, stalagmites or stalactites, whatever you call them, uh, growing from its body, and then claws. And it's it's just sort of like sitting on a little cliff top, I think. But um, its head seems to be growing in branches, just like the trees. So very organic looking creature. So this guy looks like a bit of a green fingered gardener. Uh, he's got his little pot of plants here. They look like those screaming plants from Harry Potter. I'm not sure what they're called now, um, but he's got his gardening gloves on and you know, he's looking, he's got an apron on. <laughs> he's looking ready for a day in the garden, pulling up the weeds, I think. So this looks um, like quite a bit, a bit of a scary witch actually. It looks as if you can see her spine and her rib cage um, through here. She's got her pentacles her sword or dagger um, and she's conjuring fire from her hands we've got the dreadlock lady with a moth friend and she looks like she's got moth wings as well so i know that um witches often have familiars don't they which is their animal um sidekick or counterpart so that's kind of um depicted in this book as well there's a lot of animals that seem to be the soulmate of the uh the character in the picture so this guy's got an animal skull mask and looks like he's going into battle i think so this dude again another really ripped guy he's uh he's got loads of tattoos and markings kind of reminds me of maui from moana uh he's got he's got kind of a witchy hat on and it has some arrows embedded into it so Maybe he's been through the wars, you know, he's been he's been uh, battling and fighting and then he's come home and it looks like he's about to take a shower. This one is Lady in the Forest. She has like a snowflake tattoo on her head. She's got some potions in her headdress, which is quite unusual. And uh, it looks like she's doing some sort of ritual around this tree, um, which seems to have been split down the middle. But it looks very feminine, this tree. And um, maybe it's just some sort of uh, ritual that has to be cast uh, at midday. I'm not sure. A little bit wicker man, that one. Uh, here we've got another dreadlocked, tattooed, pierced lady with the elfin ears. She's got some of those arrows through her dreads ready to pluck out and to uh, shoot off to some unsuspecting victim. So this guy has broomsticks all over the place and it looks as if they're dancing around, probably doing the housework for him. If you're a witch, you certainly would use your powers to have the housework done for you, wouldn't you? Um, I know I would. Then we've got another kind of warrior lady, looks a bit like a Valkyrie. Really, really strong lady. Love this costume again, very detailed. So this guy could be the Dragon King to the earlier Dragon Queen that we saw. And this guy looks very, very happy. He's walking along through the long grass. We've got some rather evil looking mushrooms down here, um, but he looks happy enough. He's picking them. So that's probably why they look a bit disgruntled, but <laughs> he has a um, necklace of a bird's foot and some really cute horns on his helmet. Last but not least, we've got again that dragon queen and she has her wand in her hand here she's got tattooed fingers she's really kick-ass uh, to look at so that's it now i really really hope that you enjoyed looking through this book it's very kind of different to some of the artwork we usually see in color in heaven even though it is people which oftentimes seems to be the running theme with color in heaven um it just seems very very different it sort of reminds me a little bit of the native mythology special that Colouring Heaven brought out earlier this year so if you're a fan of that one I'm sure you'll love this one too so it's very embedded in fantasy and yes you've seen it so if you want to get yourself a copy of Colouring Heaven if you live in the UK you will find it at your local supermarkets and news agents or you can click the link in the description to get it online and have it delivered to your home. Same if you are overseas, anywhere in the world, you can get Colour in Heaven shipped to you. Again, the link will be in the description for you to do that. And you can also subscribe. Colour in Heaven has an offer on at the moment uh, for UK customers to get three editions for £5. So you'll subscribe, you'll never miss an issue, and then you'll save 25% on every three issues thereafter. You'll get free delivery direct to your door 
and these are usually over five pounds each these coloring heavens so to get three for a fiver it's a really really good deal uh, if you're going if you are overseas you also have some deals here as well you can try three issues for 10 euros in europe three issues for ten dollars in the usa three issues for twenty dollars in australia and then the rest of the world you can try three issues for ten pounds so there we are there we have it you can color in the front cover if you want you can color in the back cover if you want it's all matte you can use pencils pens markers whatever the hell you want so let me know in the comments whether you liked this month's edition and i will see you soon on color with claire